What is going on, everyone? This is episode 13. I'm your host, the Intellivision Gamer. Uh, before we get started, if you like Intellivision content, please give this show a like. Consider subbing to the channel. All I do is Intellivision content. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram under the Intellivision Gamer. So today we're going to have a chat with TJ Ferreira. And if you don't know who he is, you're going to today. He is one of my favorite YouTubers. You can watch him talk about anything and have a good time and just enjoy it. He's just one of those guys. So we're going to get a little bit more into that in a bit. Uh, he is the interview, a YouTuber highlight, and a game challenge all in one tonight. So we're going to play some games. Uh, we're going to talk about this week's news, of course. And we have a homebrew highlight. And I picked the game Space Invaders because that's the game he wanted to play for in television tonight. So why not? It's a good time to do that one. All right. So let's welcome everyone in chat. Oh, and welcome to Mondays, guys. This is a little bit earlier. Our new home, Monday, hour 15 earlier. I like it. So we'll see how it works out as far as views go. So let's welcome everyone in chat. TJ was here at 2 o'clock Pacific time. <laughs> Michael Hayes was the first one in here after the regular time. Welcome, Michael. Here is Eric Lamb. Eric's a good friend of TJ's as well. I know he's going to enjoy this one. All right, who else we got? E. Buckeye, welcome, sir. And we have Cyrus telling everyone to hit that like button. Do it. Thank you, sir. Good to have you, my bowling partner. Kurt Bradshaw, welcome, sir. Roger. Glad you made it, buddy. Savador. Welcome. Universal Gaming, welcome. Ah, Chris is here. Welcome, Chris. All right, guys. So, as I just said, we do have a little update for the show. Slappy, what is going on, sir? Glad you could make it. Uh, we are on Mondays now. That should be our permanent home, 530. That's about as early as I can start and have people on the West Coast be off work and home and not be too late for guys on the East Coast. Now, I know some of you watch from a lot farther away. Uh, I've kind of got that happy medium right now. Papa Pete time's four hours ahead of me. So I know some of you guys, it's still going to be late, but it's about the best sweet spot we can find. So, all right, guys, for in television news this week, we got a couple of cool things. Uh, let me go ahead and share... We got a programming competition started by Nano Chess. It's the Inti Basic Tiny Contest. And let me throw that up real quick just in case you guys haven't seen it. Here we go. So on Atari Age. Oop, wrong one. One second. There. there we go. All right, so right here, if you search Inti Basic Tiny Contest 2024, started by Nano Chess, here are the rules. It actually ends at the end of the month, April 30th. And there are prizes, cash prizes. So definitely go check that out. I, I'm interested to see what people come up with. Uh, always cool to see projects like this. All right, so next up, we have two similar items. We have Brian's Man Cave working on a new mini game. You guys, uh, TJ actually is the one that showed me. He played, is it Paku Paku, I think it was called. It's like Line Pac-Man. Now, it's very simple, but man, is that stuff addicting. I love that little game. I've played it so much after TJ showed me. I have the link on my phone, and I'll bring it up and play it every now and then. Uh so we've got Brian's Man Cave working on one. Let's bring that up real quick. Oh, great. They all say Facebook. There we go. I got lucky. Click the right one. All right. So this is Brian's Man Cave, Brian Man Cave's Facebook. And he's got Miss Paku Paku. And then a little bit down here, he's got the uh, INTV Paku Paku. And if you haven't seen this, you're going to be in for a treat. It's very fun. Um, I'll put the link in the description, the one that you can play on the web browser and your phones, just in case you haven't already seen this. Super simple, addicting and fun, really hard to get a high score. I've got fairly high. I'm really looking forward to the Intellivision version. So he's not the only one though. A little before I saw this, there was another one on Atari age. Let me pop that up real quick. 
Uh, here we go. I think this is it. Yep. All right. So on Atari Age, pack line for the Intellivision. Atari 2600 LAN since last Thursday has been working and continuously updating this ROM. And he, he is putting it up available for you to download it and try it. Uh, definitely go check that out. I will put that link in the description as well. Uh, I I meant to try it and have it on my console so I could show you guys real quick. Um, probably get that next week. So uh, TJ and I are going to play a three console game challenge. He grew up with Odyssey 2. We're playing an television game and we have a Specky Next, which is his main computer love. Uh, so I've got all this stuff across my desk and, and I just didn't have room for you know anything else to be on here this week. So we also, if you haven't heard, we have the awards. Let me get back to the screen here. So the Intellivision Homebrew Awards for 2023, uh, I'll put a link to Papa Pete's uh, channel on the video. If you haven't already seen it, go check it out. It's a good way to support all these people that are involved in making great games. So I'm just going to quickly go over the winners and if you want to check out that video, the link will be in the description. So we had best action game. Super Mario Brothers took that. Uh, best port conversion, Dragon Quest. Now, Dragon Quest won a lot of awards and came highly ranked in everything that they were in. Best in television hack was Tron Anthology. Now, I love Tron Anthology. And that's actually where I got my start uh, doing YouTube videos. So Rev reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do a video. He knew I was in the you know process of trying to start. And so I got with Papa Pete. Papa Pete kind of took me under his wing. Of course, he did most of the work. I was just involved. Uh, it's kind of It was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot. And I really like that game. It's four games in one. Uh, one of them was never made on the Intellivision until the homebrew release. The other three are Hack Improvements from David Harley of Intelligent Vision. They, they are really good. Uh, that's also available on his website for, I think it's like $5. It's all four games, five bucks. You will be able to find some on eBay, I believe, CIB copies. So the best original game was Thunder Soldier, and, and that's another good one. Check that one out for sure. Best physical product, hands down, was Ghostbusters Deluxe, the big box. Oh. I'll show it to you real quick. This thing is huge. If I'm sure you've all seen it, but this cart is amazing. I really want to show it off in case anyone hasn't seen it. So this cart has the, uh, I don't know if it's slime. It's a ghost from the thing. It's coming out of the cart. And when you put this cart in and you turn on the console, that cart, it lights up, which is really cool. Uh, there was a lot of cool packaging in that game. It, it deserves that win. So best graphics, again, Dragon Quest, such a great port. Now, there is someone that has worked on cracking the code, so it'll help you along for those like me that either don't have the time or don't want to grind out all the to get all the money to get through the game. So you can actually enjoy the game and get through it a little quicker. Uh, that's Michael Hayes, I believe. I believe he's going to be on. They're going to be talking about that. I can't remember if it's Mike or if it's... Uh, I think it's Mike, Mike's Gaming Gala. So best uh, graphics was Dragon Quest. Best sound and music, also Dragon Quest. I mean, that sounds amazing. If you guys haven't heard it, definitely in for a treat. And the 2023 Game of the Year, the big one, was also Dragon Quest. So they took four awards, everything that they were nominated in. Uh, they did take second and physical product uh, packaging behind Ghostbusters, which, you know, Ghostbusters, that thing, there was nothing close. But when you open up Dragon Quest, you know, we've got it kind of got a new standard. Having that artwork inside when you open up the gatefold boxes is just amazing. It's like if I open a gatefold and that's not there anymore, I am definitely going to be disappointed for sure. It's just it's it looks really cool. So this week's game challenge, we'll catch up here with chat. I see a lot of people in here. We'll catch up just a few minutes, get through the, the news. So we got the Intellivision Facebook group, Invasion group, and last week was He-Man. Uh, James Brad Witt with an impressive 976,050 points. That's just amazing. Uh, this week they are playing Demon Attack. I love Demon Attack. I'm going to give it my best effort to join this one. 
all the way through this Sunday. Uh, the current high score is Rickster, Rick Weidman, with 27,251, but we still have six more days. It just started. So uh, go give Demon Attack a try. Join the Intellivision Facebook group if you haven't already. It's over 5,000 members strong. You can find pretty much everything in there. It's a great group. Uh, I'll also have the link to it in the description. Uh, these weekly challenges on there are just a great way to play in television games. If you have the game, have a few minutes, you just have to play. All the instructions will be in the post, and you just take a picture and post it on the group. It's super simple. So now the bowling league playoffs. We had a few weeks where someone was unavailable. Uh, we had someone with storms going through, and we had no internet. It took a few weeks, but we finally got it in. You know, why the home brews kicked our butt in the league, you know, the Star Strikers came through and we won the playoffs. It was a five-game roll-off. Team series, winner takes all. So we bowled a 2,888 team series to the homebrews 2,857. So after 30 games of bowling, it came down to 31 pins. It just shows you how close we got over this bowling league. And, you know, this coming week, Thursday, uh, we have a fun week. So we bowled the league. We have the playoffs. Now we're doing a bunch of fun stuff. Papa Pete has planned. It's not going to be your typical bowling game. So we're just going to have a lot of fun with it. And I just want to say, you know, I had so much fun. Papa Pete did great hosting it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I really look forward to it every week. We need to get more people involved. Uh, it was a lot of fun having some kind of league playing in television games. And the next one is going to be hosted by DJC game studios and it's going to be chip shot golf league uh, a lot of us aren't very good at that game it should be interesting we do know how to play golf but we'll have more details coming up soon uh, a day when we start and all that kind of information now we do have a video i uh met up with lathe 26 on atari age a lot of you guys probably know who he is now we recorded a video on his trip to the washington state gaming expo and he talked us through some of his pictures and we're going to play that at the end uh, it's about a 30-minute video, and I know TJ wants to get on here, and we got a lot to talk about, and we're also having a three-console challenge. So I'll play that right at the end. So now we got a couple quick-minute mail call. I actually got more in the last uh, week than I have in a while, some of which I can't show you yet. I've got a special episode coming up with a very special guest, and I'm really looking forward to that. And we're going to unbox a whole bunch of stuff that's been piling up that I haven't been showing you guys. So I told you guys last week we had these label replacements. So like anything I see like this, I went ahead and ordered some so we can check it out. And it came. It happened to come today. I figured it was going to be for next week's, but it literally came today. Got it right before I went on. The paper doesn't. It looks matte. It's not the glossy. It feels like fairly thick. I'm not going to peel one off. Uh, you know, this came with several different games. I'm not really sure if you have commons and you need labels. It's kind of a cool idea. So what's next here? All right. Let's see if I can get these out without pinning it. Nope. Don't cut myself live on YouTube. <laughs> Not good. I thought I had this open where I could pull them out at least. There we go. So this was an eBay auction. I saw the listing come up and I'm like, man, I have never seen games magazines this old before. These are from May, June, 82. It's games magazine, uh, November, 82, same March, April, 82, and another one, July, August, 82. So I've got four old magazines here, and they have a lot of Gen 2 stuff in them, including in television. So I had to pick those up. So this is something that I had made, and I asked Rez permission, of course. Um, I didn't have overlays for this game, Unlucky Pony. So I reached out to someone that makes overlays, and I had two overlays made. So now I have a complete in-box Unlucky Pony. I, I don't know that anyone else has that. I, I would be curious to you know hear from anyone that does. I'll show that off in the coming weeks. 
complete in box. We'll make it a homebrew highlight here coming up. So this is some stuff that I picked up from Luke. As I showed you guys, uh, he listed a bunch of rare stuff. Now, this is something that I hadn't picked up yet. It's very hard to find. This is a Magic Overlays 2.0. It's overlay set, and I believe it was... Oh, man, I forgot who did it. I think it was Phil Boland, but correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I'm pretty sure it was him. I'm very happy to have that. I believe I have almost all the overlay sets except for uh, Roger's first set. I have all the rest. So here's another couple of things that I picked up from Luke. I Magic Games on card. These are not easy to find these days. I picked up Ice Trek and Dracula. I'm very happy to have two of these again. Now, I did have some of these way back when I collected. Haven't had one in quite a while. Happy to have that. Let's see, missing anything here. All right, next up. Another eBay purchase. They're not in the best shape, but they're not easy to come by. Give me one second here, and I will show you guys. So these are lifestyle electronics games, and you can tell. Let me see the, the little sticker on the bottom. These come from, I believe it's just Australia. They might come from another location as well. So bowling. Drops with a little bit of fade there. Baseball. Space Armada. One more in here. Oh, that one's buried on both sides. They were able to pull all the other ones out. Astro Smash. So I do have a few of these already. There is Astro Smash but I'm happy to add those. They came all the way from Australia. I was a little bit nervous because the day that they showed up, I got a you know a little message on YouTube saying it was delivered and it was pouring rain. Our mailman usually bags everything, but I'm like, man, it might not be the regular mailman. What if it dropped in a puddle? It's going to soak through. Well, sure enough, when I got home, the box was all wet on the side. Luckily, nothing went to the, to the games, so I got lucky there. All right, guys, let's catch up on chat really quick. Rickster, I don't know if you were here when I was telling everyone about how you're kicking butt, but welcome, sir. IR Geek, welcome. Pierre, what is going on, Pierre? Always good to have you. Jeff, what is going on, Jeff? Go Game Go. If you guys don't know about Jeff, go give him a sub. Great guy. He's on the bowling league. I work with him a lot on a lot of things. Talk to him all the time. Great guy. Great channel. Definitely go give him a sub. You won't regret it. He does all kinds of different things on there. Michael Hayes. Salvador. IR Geek. Eric Lamb. Everyone. Tim. What is up, Tim? Sibling rivalry, you guys. Last week's show. Uh, it's already my third most watched, and it just started a week ago. Everyone loves you guys. Code Masseur. Welcome, sir. Yes, draughts is checkers. It's just a variant. That some countries call it draughts. I learned that, you know, when I was collecting. I'm like, what is that? I mean, I see it's checkers, but draughts? I didn't know way back when I first had it collected. All right. So now got through that. Let's do the quick homebrew highlight. So today, TJ picked Space Invaders for our Intellivision uh, game challenge. So I wanted to show you guys. This is an Intelligent Vision release. There's the back. It is a game hack from David Harley of Intelligent Vision. He took features of a couple different games and melded them all into one. A great game. We'll play it a little bit later. Here is the manual. It's pronounced drafts. Oh, yeah, very well could be. I always said draughts. <laughs> I, I didn't even think about that. Here are the overlays, Space Invaders. And here is the cart. And again, we are going to be playing that. So this is not easy to get currently CIB. 
But if you go to Intelli uh, Intellivision.us, David Harley's website, you can pick up the game in ROM form for $5. Highly recommend it. You can't beat $5 for a ROM. Same spot that Tron is, and you can pick it up. So next up, we're going to introduce my main guest. A lot of you guys are already going to know who he is. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, over 6,000 subscribers, over 1,100 videos, over 1.2 million total views. He's hilarious to watch. No matter what he's doing, you don't even have to know what he's talking about, and he's still fun to watch. He has people making books after him. Uh, games are made for him. He's also a programmer. I mean, this guy is, is amazing. I love watching everything he does. I chat with him every so often. Let's give a big welcome to my friend, TJ. Welcome, sir. Howdy. I had to Howdy, switch the, the camera around while you were talking because it, I don't know if I'm coming in right now. Do you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I okay. hear you fine. Yeah, what I had to do is the there was a delay. I couldn't see you because I had the camera turned around. I could only hear you, and your voice was different than what the voice is on my laptop. And they were they were like good thirty seconds in difference. So I was going, oh, I better switch it around. So well, it's not far delayed. Yeah, it was kind of weird. So it could just be my system here, but oh wow! As long as I'm coming in clear, let me turn up the volume a little bit, and then hopefully uh, I can hear you a little bit. <laughs> Hold on. Are you checking to see if you started the video? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did I start that video? Hey, hey, I've caught myself many of the times not doing that. So I've done that before whenever I, uh, you know, making videos, but StreamYard, that's pretty hard to do. But making videos and just recording, and I'm like, I would have swore I hit that button. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I did that, uh, well, not too long ago. And I actually came on the next and said, I just spoke for 20 some odd minutes. What I did is I reached around the camera and I somehow hit a pause or stop or something. So, so Eric's in here already. Of course, you've been talking to him and said, I can hear you too. <laughs> and there's proof. <laughs> Good. Now, well, I'm glad I'm I know the answer to this one, but first time, long time, love your show. Just one question. Does TJ Ferreira, have any relation to PJ Ferreira? And we've talked about that before, and it's a no, right? Correct. Not to my knowledge, unless there's some uh, long distance thing. I, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, the first time I saw that guy on YouTube, I, I messaged you right away. He's like, "What? What is this? Is this someone you're related to?" Big right. Doomer's here. Welcome, Doomer. Yeah, it's not even. It's only one letter apart. You know, PK and TJ. So you never know. Yeah. Well, it looks like I learned something today. It's drafts, not drops. <laughs> right. Raps. <laughs> I was not aware of that. Retro Bliss Gaming, what is going on, sir? Welcome. Yes, I am on Mondays much better, a little earlier, which will work out better for everyone. So, as I said, TJ, you have a very successful YouTube channel. I, among many others, love watching everything you do, even when it's something you're talking about that I've never seen or don't even have before. I just love watching your videos. And we've known each other for, you know, a few years now. And I've been wanting to have you on, and I'm excited to have you on. We're going to talk a little bit. I'll ask you some questions. Uh, chat, if you have some questions, go ahead and start throwing them up, and we'll we'll ask them as well. Cool. But So you have a YouTube channel. Just tell us briefly like what it is that you do on there, what we can find if someone goes to your channel to watch some videos. I swear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My swears are gentle, though. I like using the word bastard and son of a bitch. Uh, those are my common. I, I periodically drop the F-bomb. But, yeah, my YouTube channel was just an outlet for me to make silly videos. And then over time, I have always been into vintage computers. And I just found that making a video so I could remember what I did and I can go back and watch it was a great thing. So I started making videos on my journey playing with all my old computers and uh, slowly but surely some folks seem to enjoy what I do. I enjoy making the videos. So yeah, I just uh, mostly chat about and play video games. Has to be old. I'm not into the new modern PS5s and all that. I'm Atari and, and television, Odyssey 2. And then of course for modern retro like my Spectrum Next that I have down here, 
And uh, I also have some other hobbies that I periodically make videos for. I'm a fly fisherman, so I do make periodic uh, 10 car fly fishing videos, as well as Volkswagen. I like old air cooled Volkswagens, so I will play uh, and do a little mechanic videos here and there. So it's just kind of a fun little channel for me to tinker. Eric says natural peanut butter. I still laugh at that one. Yes, you know I I also <laughs> if you can't laugh at yourself, no one's gonna else is gonna laugh at you, right? So. I find some of the videos I make, if I need to cheer myself up, I'll watch that peanut butter video. And just because I need to have a smirk and it was so stupid, <laughs> I think it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I like doing silly things like that. So, Retro Bliss Gaming says, I've subbed to TJ's channel for a while. Love his channel, OG's Rule. That's right. I agree. <laughs> Thank you for watching my channel, too. So Appreciate you it. also have multiple Facebook groups that are pretty large. And there are a lot of there are a lot of good content and uh, fun to be in. Uh, why don't you tell us which Facebook groups you're in, so people that are interested can go join them? Yeah. So my original one was Sinclair Society. Uh, I started that a good five plus years ago. It's now up to 2,600 members or so, and uh, it's all about my fascination. I'm in the United States, so any United States bloke that loves Sinclair is kind of an oddity. There's a few of us out there, but I started that channel first and it's grown really well. And then I think about a year ago, maybe a little more, I started the 8-Bit Diary because as you know, I've got other Ataris and Intellivisions and stuff like that that I enjoy using, but it didn't fit in with the Sinclair Society group. So I made an 8-Bit Diary, which is kind of my little place for anything really retro computer, 8-Bit, 16-Bit, and so on. So Slappy just threw up there. What's up, TJ, you bastard? <laughs> <laughs> Slappy. Thank you. Yes. And, and Slappy has been so kind. Probably you could see it in my video, my little face way back here. Uh, he's he's made it for you and for me yep. and for other folks like us, little YouTube channels. He's made fun graphics that we use on our shirts, like this. That's the he new made shirt. That. And he made the graphic that's on your shirt right now. That That's my favorite one right there. Exactly. So <laughs> Slappy is a very kind person for uh, thinking of us smaller guys on the YouTubes, making us fun things to make us look a little bit more professional. So thank you. Yes. And he does great work. And I have a little bit of it, too. And, man, it's always top notch. Yep. So Agreed. After the YouTube and the Facebook groups, you have uh, people have made stuff. You know, I don't know if you say about you or for you. You have a book, and yep, yeah, I do Dan have Lindis. two copies. I bought one yeah. to collect and one that I can actually read and look at. And this is available on Amazon, right? Yep, on Amazon. Jay Mundy made it for me as a gift. I received this big blue bag this last Christmas, and I'm like, "What the heck is going on? What's this blue bag, and who's it from?" <laughs> I open it up and it's a book about me. <laughs> I go, holy crapola. So Jay is a very um, creative soul. He's he's our friend up north, up in Canada. And he has made video games for the Aquarius. Uh, and he's made uh, all sorts of stuff. He's very knowledgeable in terms of programming. He has his own channel that is all about programming things and stuff. Sprite is the name of it. So yeah, he was very... Nice and made a book about me, which baffled the hell out of me, but very sweet of him, very nice of him. And in fact, I'm going to include the PDF of it uh, in a game that I made uh, as an extra bonus on an SD card. But yeah, you can buy the PDF. You can buy the book if you want to learn more about me. He did a great job. It's really neat. And the other cool thing that someone did is they made a game with you in it and a lot of the stuff that you like. And yep. uh, I have that on my next this is when they released the physical tape version. Now, I don't have any way to play this. I just bought it because it was of you. Uh, yeah. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that game. Yeah, so TJ's Cavern Capers. Uh, you know, I guess you've kind of arrived if somebody makes something about somebody. And I, I, I felt really... Uh, I, I was amazed that somebody would make a video game about me. I do have a colorful, I guess, personality, so I can understand why one would do it. But he made this game about uh, me, and TJ is the little character that goes through caverns. There's some other well-known Sinclair uh, personalities also in the game. 
uh, that uh, is available there too. So if you're into the world of Spectrum, that's what this game was made for, is ZX Spectrum. You'll see some of the other personalities in there. And yeah, I'm this chubby little white bearded guy that runs around in the video. Uh, it's a, a jumping game and collecting game and uh, really fun. So yeah, I, I, I've got a couple of copies myself just to say, somebody made a video game about me. That's yeah, <laughs> and the game is actually quite fun, and it it gets hard. Absolutely, yeah. Well, if you're there's no such thing as a easy ZX Spectrum game. Everything has to be hard as nails, kill you in the first round kind of thing. I mean, there's some games that are a little bit easier, but uh, yeah, ZX Spectrum programmers, I make a joke that they're spawns of Satan because their <laughs> video games. Ask Eric Lamb. And ask you, they're quite <laughs> difficult um, uh, to play at some point. So yeah. Eric chimed in saying it's very fun. But, you know, you saying the specky programmers, you know, they're bastards. Uh, that leads me into the next question because you yourself are a specky programmer. And you yeah. have two games that you've programmed. Why don't you tell us briefly just about the first one? Yeah. So back in 2018, I started creating my own game for the ZX Spectrum, the original one because I didn't own a Next yet. No one really did uh, because they hadn't shipped yet, uh, other than to some folks that had the motherboards only, kind of like the developer type. Uh, so I wanted to learn and get back into programming. The last time I made any program was in the 1980s on my Atari 800. I started creating a game called Invasion of the Cloud People, and I started making it on my Atari 800. I was of the age where I was starting to learn to drive, and girls started looking really cute. So oh, I yeah. go, heck with this programming stuff. I'm going to buy a car <laughs> and cruise down Main Street in Livermore, California, because girls were cool, and uh, heck with that. So I didn't make it, but that to my 50s, where I'm old and decrepit and a lot uglier now, uh, <laughs> and I started making a game again. And for whatever reason, I gravitated to using the ZX Spectrum. I made my first game for the Specky 48, and then when I received my next, I made a special new version in the same family, but it's called Invasion of the Cloud People, the Next Storm. And it's basically a specky nextified version of my game that takes it into a new realm. And yeah, I've made two games to date. Very cool. So you kind of got into my second part <clears throat> of that question was tell us about your second game. Uh, that is where I came in. So I bought my NGO because you couldn't even get the next at the time just so I could play your game. I, like most people here in the States, didn't even know what a specky computer was, uh, right. any version. So whenever, you know, I met you and Chad's like, I see you always talking about it and showing us like, man, I got to get one of those. I just want to play his game. And that's how I got mine. And then later I end up getting a genuine next. But so I have two of them. And then from there, I went to play your original game and both are fun. Now I have, I'm one of the few people that have beat the next storm, but I have not beat your first game yet. I find it a lot harder and using the keyboards instead of a controller on that one, it's okay for a while, but in the later levels, man, it's difficult because you use different, what are the keys you use? Because you don't use, you know, WASD, which is what I'm used to. You use different keys, right? Yeah. In, in the world of Spectrum, they did use many options, but QAOP became one of the more popular and what I gravitated to. Q is up, A is down. O is left and P is right. And it separates my hands nicely on the, yep. uh, on the uh, keyboard. So I gravitated to that, and that's what I made it for. I didn't include that's joystick because at the time, I was a new programmer, and adding joystick would have added a lot more time to my little brain to make it. So I said, <laughs> screw it. They're going to just use the keyboard. <laughs> I think that's what makes it hard for me because I'm used to using three fingers and WASD separating it. It's just something I've never done, so I don't have the muscle yeah. memory for it. I did get fairly far, but I have not beat it yet. It's been a while. But uh, so one of these games, you are actually working on a physical release. Now, I've already ordered some copies. Uh, tell us a little bit or whatever you're willing to talk about for your physical release. Yeah, I'm really close. I've been waiting. on. I ordered a lot of print stuff, uh, some local, some over the Internet. The last thing of my puzzle I was supposed to receive in the last number of weeks, and they claimed they shipped it, never shipped it. Uh, I proved they didn't get it to me. I had to ask for a refund so I could order it elsewhere because they were 
just really taking me over the coal. So I got my money back, reordered it elsewhere. I should get it before the end of the month. And if all goes well, I'll start being able to make a few copies. You're the first one that's going to receive them because you are officially the best captain after me <laughs> <laughs> on the Celia Storm, which is the name of the ship in the game. We're going to settle have, that tonight. Yeah, you have beaten this game <laughs> many times. I've beaten the game, and only one other person that I know of that has proof that they've won it. It's not a, a big game. It's only 10 levels. But that's, I like quick in, quick out games, something that doesn't take you generations to learn. You go in, you play it, and I have my games that have a lot of random in there, like in life. You're walking at a bird poops on you, that's pretty random. So random's in my game, which can beat you up sometimes, oh. other times it doesn't. But yeah, I've got a physical version that I've been working on, and I'm really close. This is what the front cover looks like. It's Invasion of the Cloud People, The Next Storm. I wanted to make a copy for my own shelf because I have all these Specky Next games and I made one and I didn't have a case. So I said, I'm going to make myself one case. And then I got other people saying, if you make some, I'll buy one from you. So I go, okay, I'm going to come up with an idea. I came up with an idea that I'm going to make 54 of these only. 54 is a special number. And I'll in my past videos, people will know why I chose 54. Uh, once I get this final piece that goes in here, I'll tell people what the 54 stands for, but here's the back of the, uh, I'm trying to do it to where there's not much glare. Right the there. Back of it. And then inside, stuff's going to probably flip out, but I've got a little goodie bag with all sorts of treats in here of things that come with the set, SD card. I'm not going to give everything away, but inside of here, there's multiple things that come with this physical edition. A little kit that lets you make your own little, where did I put them? Uh, I don't know where, oh, here he is. Uh, My kids are looking forward to that guy. They've seen him, they love him. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, it, Cloud People, this is Claude Popples. I don't know if this will come in at all. It's coming in. It's a little fuzzy pom-pom toy. And in the spirit of Sinclair, one of the things that Sinclair was known for, you could buy the computer in a kit form or built for you. So what I did is I created a kit that goes in that little Ziploc baggie I showed you of all the components to make your own, thinking of the kids or adults that never grew up like me to make their own Claude Popples. That's a little mascot <laughs> of my game. So a lot of little fun things being thrown in here. There's some adult things being thrown in here that uh, like beer coasters for your beer. So we can all at some point have a big chug of beer together. So I'm just making a fun first probably last physical edition of a game that I made. And so, yeah, it's really fun. It, it's an experience I haven't finished yet. I'm damn close. And hopefully I'll be shipping them in May. And, and Casey, since he's been the best captain, will get his copies first. And he's a guinea pig, too. He's going to have to tell me, yes, TJ, they arrived and they worked and it looks good. Or, no, you need to <laughs> rework something. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So, you know, I'm a Patreon member and a YouTube member. And early on, you know, watching you put all your heart and soul in just trying to do everything you can for this release. I just get more excited every time I see something because it's not just your simple, I put a game, here's your card, go load it. There's like a lot of thought, right. a lot of little things put into it, a lot of cool stuff, extras, and I'm just really excited to get my hands on it. I love the game, uh, and my kids are going to love building that little, what was it, Cloud Popples? Cloud Popples, yeah. Cloud it's basically Popples. a play on Cloud People. So yeah. I thought Claude as the first name, Popples as the last name, Claude people, Claude people. Yeah, it makes sense. So Claude Popples, yes. So <laughs> I got multiple versions, and then I got one for each of my kids because there's some cool custom things in there, and uh, they were very excited to see that. And, and I'll 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 be putting it on my channel when I get it uh, eventually under uh, Specky Next. So yeah, all of these we uh, have... SD cards come with a video that I'm making. That's why I'm only making 54. Each one has a personalized video that I make for that person uh, to say, you know, kind of a thank you. But it's space oriented. It's part of the game. And I'm helping them and calling a distress call saying, I need your help. And I and I call out their name. And it just makes it a little bit more personalized and fun. Uh, and, yeah, it's been a great yeah. experience. It, it's very, those things are very cool. It's like my kids just lit up whenever uh, you've seen the videos. They loved it. So Eric has been up here a while. I didn't get a chance to say it. He says... I tried again today, died in the last level again. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
So yeah, Eric, I'm gonna make it hard. If I only have ten levels, I got to make that really last two uh, bits to win. And uh, maybe one day, if if this goes well enough, I'll get the uh, karma back again, or whatever you call the the uh, excitement to make another game. I have an idea, uh, but maybe one day I'll make another game. So. And, you know, he says he's beat it. I kind of believe him, but it's fun to not believe him. Uh, he has no proof. So he beat the game. He's tried many, many, many times. The one time he beat it, he took no pictures, no proof, right. no video. Uh, so we kind of give him a half on that one <laughs> until he yeah, gets and I, it again and gets proof. I've drink and drunk uh, both with Eric quite a few, many years. I wouldn't believe that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah only he's a one. drinking partner of mine when we go to an Amiga event. So yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, where we go here? I kind of got lost. Uh, so we talked about social media presence. You have Facebook. Are there? Is there anything else you're on? Any other social medias? Do you do anything like Twitter? Anywhere else people can find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter slash X as Sinclair Society. I think my official name there is Society Sinclair because somebody else had the first one. Uh, but I'm on Twitter uh, and, of course, the uh, Facebook. I've got the, those avenues. My YouTube channel, which is the main place, so uh, youtube.com forward slash Mac Society. Uh, I've used the word society in all of my names forever, and I'm a Mac person. I love Mac, so Mac Society. So, yeah, those are the main places to see my videos, my YouTube channel, and my Facebook groups to have more one-on-one -on -one conversations and chats and games of the week and we play games on the facebook group and uh cheer each other on it's just a fun fun way to vent and, and have fun with friends so one thing i forgot to get into that i meant to when we we're talking about your youtube pages you do play a lot of old stuff including in television of course you yeah. actually have quite an intellivision collection uh and, and occasionally you're making videos on them. you have a lot of the 125 and you also have several homebrews uh, yep. which I do have one set aside. Uh, oh, I was, I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> where did I put that? That should have been unboxed. I actually have, uh, that Aquarius game that got missed somehow. So those Aquarius I games, I was going to show that off today too. So I, yeah, I got a copy of that for you. Uh, I haven't had time to ship it yet, but, uh, what was that one called? Uh, du D dungeon deep or something. Yeah, He's something done, like that. I thought I had it right here with all my stuff, but right whenever I started talking about it, I realized I did not show it, so I don't know where it went. <laughs> well, you showed me, so I know you have it. Yeah, yep, I kind of cracked open the box, ones. took a picture. Yeah. Uh, so now I, since you know, my family, we all have our TJ shirts. We all have both. Uh, my family, you know, they all love you. They all have heard your voice countless hours as I watch you know, videos and they're around and my kids actually go around saying you bastard and uh, <laughs> other stuff. Uh, so I asked them, I thought it would be nice. I asked them, I'm interviewing TJ, having them on the show. Do you guys have any questions for TJ? So I do have some from, I have one from Mrs. Intellivision Gamer and the kids ask a question. So nice, we're going to okay. get on to that. So Mrs. Intellivision Gamer wants to know what your favorite guilty pleasure food item is. Guilty pleasure. This one's going to sound weird, but peanut butter on graham crackers and then get sugar and pour sugar all over the top of the peanut butter. That is a guilty pleasure that tastes phenomenal. Try it. Uh, it sounds crazy, but if you're okay to eat sugar, lots of sugar right on top of the peanut butter on a graham cracker. Yeah. So is that creamy or crunchy? Either one. Both work. Either one. <laughs> yeah. Just All right. buy the natural peanut butter because it takes you 10 hours to stir it up. Stir it up. Yeah, I've had that before. So Arlene, my eight-year-old daughter, she wants to know how many pets you have and what are their names? Four pets, two dogs, two cats. Uh, one of the dogs is an Australian shepherd named Luna. She's about three. That's the crazy uh, one, right? Uh, she is. <laughs> when we play the video games later, the odds are highly likely she's going to come to the door behind the screen and bark. That will be Luna. Uh, the other one is Cooper. He's a two-year-old corgi. And then we have two cats that are about 13. Uh, one is Zoe, little girl, and one's Blue, little boy. They're both Siamese. So we have all purebred pets. 
a Siamese cat, and then an Australian Shepherd and a Corgi. So when I was a kid, it's been a long time since I've been around a Siamese cat. What are those guys like? They're kind of odd, aren't they? They are mischievous little sons of a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, so. There's not a day that goes by my uh, at my home that I haven't swore like a dickens <laughs> all day long at my pets, at my video games. The cats and dogs can drive us nuts. They're, uh, you know, I'm older now, right? I, I shouldn't have got new dogs that are really high energy Australian Shepherd and Corky, and they're only two and three, so they're just high, so high maintenance, high energy, and then you add two crazy Siamese to the mix, it's a madhouse. So I almost forgot, I wanted to ask you, so it's been a while, but I've sent you some very interesting anonymous packages, and the first one was the best because you weren't expecting it. Uh, tell us a little bit about those packages and what you first thought whenever it showed up. Well, the first one tricked me. I was thinking it really was what was in the box. <laughs> then the second one, I was, well, you know, it's perfectly sealed. There's tape over. There's no way he could have opened that up unless he has a tape machine that could do it and make it look pretty. So I really thought I was going to get the second thing. The third one was, okay, I know it's not. It's going to be a trick. He's got some <laughs> special tape gun. And they're all gag type of boxes, uh, you know, cat set, to, this little microphone thing that you... The cats can talk, and I hear it in English. It translates, to, yeah. To a poo cover uh, thing that you put over your poos to <laughs> disguise them. So, and then inside, of, and that's not the only thing. So, inside of them often come with other uh, novelty things, and some of them <laughs> can be of an adult nature. Uh, and so, yeah, I should say the very first package I ever received from him. Uh, and I actually threw it away because I didn't know it was him yet. He said something that was of a large adult uh, nature. And my wife goes, did you order this? <laughs> I go, no. And it had to, I'll say, I'll say, especially with the letter D. That's all I'm going to say. And so I go, I, receive, I don't know who this is. I haven't really built a relationship with Casey yet in that respect. But I did find out later after he sent me the other gag box that, did you send me this? And he goes, yes. So, yeah, he sent me all sorts of strange, fun packages. So the first one was actually kind of timed well because it was during COVID when toilet paper was hard to get. So what was right? that? I know That's you call it the Butt Wipe 2000, but. Right. Yep. <laughs> it was butt Wipe 2000. And I think I actually used that in something. I was doing some video and I think I brought it out as a joke saying, you know, the butt wipe 2000. So I still have them. They're right here within 10 feet of my arm. I keep them up over here on top of my hutch. So I actually uh, have stuff started for another box, but man, between my RC racing, family life, work, working overtime and the YouTube videos, that's been a big one because I don't look like, it doesn't look like I do a whole lot. It takes a lot of time. And yeah. I just haven't had time to do all those other kind of things, but I do have one started for you. So <laughs> at some point you'll be getting another one, but I get these <laughs> gag boxes on uh, Amazon and I handpick certain ones because he has pets. So, you know, the one was with the toilet paper and it was like an attachment that goes to your, the roto wipe something or other. It's like a wire wheel thing or a brush wheel that goes onto the toilet seat. So it's like, say goodbye to toilet paper. And it was during COVID when toilet paper was hard to get. The other <laughs> one <clears throat> was cover, you know, just little rocks that you can put out in your yard when you don't want to pick up the poop, you know, because he has pets and multiple dogs. And so I got that one. The other one was the little collar that they wear. And whenever they bark, it tells you in English, it's a translator. Yeah. Uh, I try to pick stuff related to him. And inside each one, I, I think some of them have like, there was homebrew games for in television. Uh, a lot of other gag type items, like the one hat says IP in pools and just like a bunch of fun, funny stuff. Nothing too serious. Uh, but it's usually some good stuff in there too, like uh, in television homebrew games and whatnot. Uh, yep. So I enjoy it. Uh, my wife, she makes fun of me. She's like, because I'll be getting this stuff together and I'm just laughing and because I'm picturing you, what the hell is this? You know, and it's like, <laughs> I had so much fun watching that first one because you didn't expect nothing. Now you kind of get what's going on, but yeah. that first one, I just died laughing. I don't even, I can't even tell you how many times I watched that and just be laughing. And uh, I had to do it over and over and over. <laughs> I must have been like five, six times I've watched that first one. 
Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I kind of got lost here. So you, you did talk a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, Volkswagen interests, but what other interests besides gaming and computers do you partake in? Because there are a few and one of a big one that I don't think we talked about yet. Fly fishing. Yes. Yeah. So I, I work for a company called Tenkara USA and we make Japanese fly rods. There's no real. So most of the time I've got basically three or four main hobbies, obviously vintage gaming, vintage computers, vintage uh, Volkswagen, uh, both driving and wrenching on them and then fly fishing, Tenkara. Uh, those are our, my main focus every day, every night, every morning. Either I'm thinking of all four of them or one mostly that day, whatever I'm in the mood for. That's my main core about me. Those are the things I like to do. It's all fun stuff. My son, I don't know where he gets it because I like going out to the lake, but I've never, I like fishing, but I'm not very good at it. I've never really, I wasn't raised fishing. I like it in small bursts, but my son can fish all day, every day, loves it, yeah. talks about it since he was a little kid. And I don't know where he got that because my dad is not a fisherman. I'm more of a fisherman than my dad, but I don't really fish. Uh, mm -hmm. Lucky, my father-in-law has a houseboat. And when we go there, it's like a, a lot of the kids are running around playing. You know, he's only 11. He's like, can I go fishing? And they have stuff set aside. And he goes out and he'll just sit there and fish. And, you know, he's, you know, a hyper kid. And he, you know, normally runs around doing all kinds of things. But when he's fishing, he's right there focused. He's just. It's nice. amazing to watch them. Be cool someday if we could buy some stuff and uh, maybe go fishing with you. I know that he would love that if that ever worked out. Because uh, yeah, I absolutely. certainly can't. I certainly can't take him and know what to do. But you would. Fly fishing, Tenkara, Yes. Spin I think he would like no. that. I haven't done anything with a reel for four decades. But for fly fishing, Tenkara, Yeah, that's my thing. I, I know it quite well. I have to for my work but I do it for fun and enjoyment. It's uh, a little bit of a Zen thing. Uh, reading the water, understanding where fish are. There's a lot of nuance to fly fishing and I find that fascinating for me. I th He's never tried fly fishing. I think he would like it. <clears throat> and there, there's a lot more movement in that one than traditional type fishing. Uh, yeah. I think that would be better for him as well. I, more I can't teach him how to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one other thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't touch on earlier, because this is an Intellivision show, tell us a little bit about your Intellivision collection, and uh, then I have a few other questions Intellivision related. Yeah. So I actually own all three Intellivisions, the original one, the two, and then the System 3. My uh, one, I purchased it, and it was DOA. It didn't work. I did buy a replacement motherboard for it. Three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, whenever it was, never replaced it, but I do have it just in case because I like the size of the uh, Intellivision 2. It's a little smaller, and I've got so much computer stuff in the house and video games, the real estate is really important. So I love the size of the two. I just hate the controllers of the two. We all do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I know you could buy sometimes adapters that let you use other controllers. Maybe one day I'll explore that. But for now, and what we're going to play on today is the System 3. That's what I've got out. And I have, I started my collection with about 30 games myself. And then you sent me about 80 games or whatever it was. <laughs> so I've got 100 and some odd games very quickly. And then I also have that uh, cartridge that you sent me that lets you put games on it, like homebrews. The LTO the Flash. Are, yes, LTO Flash. So I've got that. I played a few games on it, like a Christmas game. So I've got a nice Christmas little Carol. collection. For somebody that didn't have it in television as a kid, I was an Odyssey 2 kid. I do have a fun collection. I do periodically play video games. The world of Intellivision is a little, I'm going to call it interesting, <laughs> the, the people that follow it. So I tend not to do as much in television these days because it's better served by folks like you and others. But I still enjoy it. And I still periodically play it, and it's still prominently here in my office. Uh, I just have so many things to tinker and play with. It doesn't get as much attention as my Odyssey 2 or my Ataris. But, yes, I do like it. I like everything about it. And it plays some wonderful video games. 
Yeah, those people you speak of, most of that stuff's all gone. It's all pretty much a good community again. Chris says, try the Wyco command controller joysticks for Intellivision. You'll hate them. So <laughs> he is speaking. I don't know if you've. Oh, yeah. That looks really clumpy. Yeah, they look like they could be cool, but they're really not. <laughs> But uh, they're hard to get. Like my TI-99 joystick. Those are actually pretty bad. Yeah, they make those for a lot of different consoles, so it's not just in television. They're highly collectible, and it's a good piece to have, but I wouldn't want to use one. Ah. So whenever you're ready, uh, Caleb Garner, 8-Bit Widgets, a good friend of mine, he makes a lot of stuff for the retro community, and he makes all kinds of adapters and things. He has adapters for anything where you can use flashback controllers you know, the Intellivision 2, you can already use uh, other things. So there's, he has all kinds of things. Anything you need, we can get it done. You just let me know. There he is. Uh, cool. Michael Hayes says, you know, Intellivision people, we are interesting people indeed. And yeah, Cyrus. I, I, I like to always say interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good? nice word. So yeah. Cyrus says, odd people. Hmm, interesting. First time hearing of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and 8-Bit Widgets, Caleb is here. So he said, yo, and then Jeff's here as well. Hi, Super Mega Graphics. We all bowl together. It's, we have a lot of fun in that bowling league. So right here, Caleb saying, just finished watching three three body problems, catching up and chat. Oh, that's a weird-ass yeah. show, man. I've got the uh, number four, uh, and that's a real crazy show on Netflix. So I don't know if Eric's told you, but Eric – Talked to me, and he now has an Intellivision, a start of a collection. He got quite a few games. Uh, I He still needs to reach out to me, and we'll talk, and I'm going to send him a few more good games. I have cool. a lot of comments. I told him I'd send him some. So he says I'm a bad influence, but now he has a, a start, a good start of an Intellivision collection himself now. Sweet. And Jeff of Go Game Go, he says, hi, TJ. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick, Rickster8. Says make an intelligent trackball. I think he's talking to Caleb uh, on that one. So a trackball would be cool. That would definitely be a fun way to play some of the games. So uh, what about homebrews? Tell me a little bit about what homebrews. You have quite a few of those now too, don't you? On the intelligent side, I've got a, a handful uh, that you've got me over the years. I'm trying to remember the one that I probably liked the most and enjoyed the most was it Dynamite. Dan, Rick Dynamite. Rick Dynamite. That was probably the one that I did the best at out of all of them. Uh, it seemed to be right in my ballpark for video game play. Uh, on the Intel, that's the only one that pops into my head. I've got a handful of them that you've got me over the years, uh, but that one stands out as a fun one. That's one of my favorite games as well. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I, I, know got, you, I know you have, I think I sent you all four of the recent ones. If I didn't, I can't. It's been a while now. You have like yep. Caverns of Mars, and in fact, I, I was going to revenge. That I yep. was going to choose one of those for the game that we're going to play here, but I thought we would keep it really old schooly and go straight Space Invaders. But yeah, Yars Revenge, Caverns of Mars, and then you got me a chess one, and also a uh, train one where you run on a train. Yep, stop the express. There you go. I, I thought I sent all four of those. They, they all came out at the same time. And, yeah, yeah. I thought I sent all four. Of them, but I didn't know if I sent two and I was leaving two for the next package. I couldn't remember. But, yeah, you must have all four. Yep, I got it. So what is your favorite OG in television game of the ones you've played? What's your favorite game on Intellivision, the original 125? Oh, boy. Dig Dug? Dig Dug? I like Dig Dug. I have a yeah. really good score on YouTube, 200 and something thousand points on Dig Dug on Intellivision. And that wasn't easy, but I do. I love Dig Dug. I played the arcade Dig Dug a lot growing up, and I still play it today. Mr. Do, there's so many old arcade games that I just love to play. Yeah, Dig Dug was my, that's probably, Dig Dug is probably the game that I did the best at as a kid. Uh, so, yeah, Dig Dug all the way for me. All right. Well, chat, do you, I don't I don't think I missed any questions. I didn't know if anyone in chat threw up questions. So, if any of you guys have any questions 
for TJ. Throw them up. Uh, we'll sit here just a couple minutes chatting, and uh, then we'll get into the gameplay. We're going to play three consoles. We're going to show you. Oh, yeah. All right. So Rick says Dig Dug is next up on the Intellivision Invasion Facebook group challenge. Nice. So I'm going to definitely – I'm going to do that one as well. So I got to play uh, Demon Attack, and I'm definitely going to do Dig Dug. I might actually be able to give you a run for your money, Rick, but I'm sure you're going to be like three, four hundred thousand. <laughs> I so never questions for TJ guys. Those kind of things. I don't. Oh, that. Oh, here's a good one. So Jeff, go game, go. Wants to know what is TJ's favorite Odyssey two game. I would say one that I actually play has to go to Casey Munchkin. That was the game every Odyssey two kid had to have. For actual play, it's that one. But Quest for the Rings technically is the most elaborate game that is a must-have if you're in Odyssey 2. But for actual playability, playing Arcady, Casey Munchkin is probably my all-time favorite. Now, this is one I also forgot. What was your first, not first console, but you had something before that. What was your first experience with video games? Atari Pong in 1970-whatever it came out, 73, 72, 74. When did Pong come out? <laughs> uh, year. You're talking to a guy that was born in 75, and I was only yeah. four or five when Intellivision came out. I, I don't even remember getting Intellivision. It's just something that was always there. Right. So I played Pong units later, and I have quite a few that I've collected. But uh, I love the Pong units and all the little – there's some fancier ones, you know, that are out and all these different options. It's still fun yep. to play. But yeah. uh, we didn't have so them that, when they were new. That was our first. Our family uh, received a, an Atari Pong. And then me, myself, and I, my parents, because I was the nerdy one of the family, uh, I wanted an Odyssey 2 in 1976 or 77, whenever it was. And that's when my folks got me one for my uh, Christmas presents. So oh, I was nice. an Odyssey 2 kid. So here we've got a really interesting one from Eric Lamb. Question for TJ. Why is Commodore your favorite computer brand? <laughs> <laughs> He's a liar. See, I told you, he <clears throat> lies a lot. I'm an Atari, and damn it. Uh, in terms of computers, I'm an Atari kid. I had a choice. I could have went with a Commodore because in junior college, I used a Commodore Pet. Uh, not junior college, junior high school. Uh, but when I purchased my first computer, 1980, an Atari 800 is what I purchased. But I have nothing against Commodore. But since my Commodore friends razzed me about liking Atari, I have to razz my friend Eric and my other yeah. Amiga friends for being commies because they like the Commodore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Atari, it's like anything. Atari rules. Ford, Chevy, you know, it's like it just brand rivalry it's it's nothing serious just have a lot yeah, of fun with it it's all in fun so, I, and i go to amiga conventions commodore conventions with my atari shirt uh and I, I, i'm not afraid <laughs> to do it <laughs> so caleb of 8-bit widget says absolutely going back to the to the game crazy chase 2 with voice yeah that's a good game my and, voice just kicked the bucket it's doing this yeah. loud hum so I've got to learn how to fix it. I'm guessing capacitors, something on there. I've never, last time I did electronic work was in high school in the 1980s. Uh, so I need to uh, get a soldering machine out and maybe just replace the capacitors as an automatic. This may be what's wrong with it. And if that don't fix it, try to find another one on eBay. But yeah, mine just kicked the bucket. So no voice for me at the moment. Yeah, th those aren't exactly easy to find either. Hopefully, we can get it fixed. I reached out to several people today. Uh, Caleb was one of them to see if he knew anyone, and I haven't had any luck yet. But you know, we did get a little bit of tips. Hopefully, maybe we try that. You try some of that stuff, and it might work. If not, I would say a post on Atari Age in the Odyssey Two section, and yeah. maybe someone you know, hey, yeah, send it to me. I'll fix it. You know, that'd be pretty sweet. We'll we'll try that avenue. So Michael Hayes says Arcade Pong. I'm trying to catch up with chat now. It's a little bit ago now. Arcade Pong was 1972 when it first came out. But That's the Pong right. units, they, they came out, you know, all the time. There was so many of those Pong units. Yeah. Michael says I once had. So, yeah, Michael, right. Michael, Michael Hayes says I once had a Tank 2 arcade cabinet from 1974. 
And this is a guy that's younger than me. <laughs> like quite a bit. Games are, what is going on, sir? Welcome. Kurt Bradshaw says, my grandmother bought us the Odyssey 1 with the TV overlays. I also had a Radio Shack Pong game to hook up to the TV. I have the Odyssey 1 as well. And uh, I haven't tried it. I have the gun. All the overlays look never used. All the money and different things that come with it. There's a lot of stuff that comes with that. Yeah, the old Odysseys were. I never owned any of the original Odysseys. I went right to the two and then moved yep. on to computers from there. But I didn't even cool. know. I didn't even know the first one existed until uh, you know I started collecting later in life. Yeah. So Eric says, "Yeah, it's all in fun. I have a ton of Atari too." <laughs> uh caleb says i can't i can't imagine there is much inside that thing it uses the same voice chip as intv iirc so it might be fairly simple to fix for those that know you know what they're doing yeah yeah i'm not afraid to get in and open stuff it's just been a long time since i've used a soldering gun successfully the last time i did it was five years ago on my Volkswagen and needed to solder a little leg to an old component, uh, really intricate motherboard stuff. I'm sure I, over time and I build a courage, I'll figure out how to open up the case without busting it. And then I'm sure there's capacitors in there that are probably four decades old. So just replace them and see if it fixes it. Hopefully you can get it going again. Uh, Gamesar says, my tank two was a home pong like console. So I think that's pretty much caught up. Well, uh, cool. are you ready to play some games and show off? Uh, first, we're we going to start with the first game that you made? Yeah, might as well. I've got that up on this screen because when we switch to Intellivision and Odyssey, I'm going to have to turn that camera over that direction and turn, get my laptop over there and switch things around because I've got those connected to a big TV. On this, I've got a 32-inch uh, monitor that we're going to play my Spectrum Next on. And I'm gonna play uh, my rich. Well, do, we'll play the next storm first, or do you want to play the old one first? Uh, let's play the okay. first one first, and kind of that way we can kind of go in order okay. of uh, you know how they made the game. So cool. Yeah. Let so me let, one one quick second. I left the controller on charge. Okay. And hopefully my dog doesn't go ballistic. Like I said, she's an Australian <laughs> Shepherd. She goes in convulsions when she hears 8-bit game sounds, and she'll come right to the screen door that's behind my desk here and bark crazily for until I stop. So hopefully she, she doesn't do that. <laughs> uh, Michael Hayes says, the voice of Odyssey, I have one, and the game Turtles, it's used to sing the background music. Yep. And then he says, there's uh, Coleco Combat, which is two-player head-to-head with Battlezone controls. I have one of those two nice camouflage print of the unit. Uh, type and tell on the O2 is impressive for making the O2 talk, and that's from Caleb. Yes. So uh, I have a voice the, unit, and then I have the little small cartridge reproduction one. I don't even know if that's available anymore. I haven't tried it. I need to do that one of these days. Yeah, doesn't and that little thing do voice? Uh, 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 so there's a way to get voice and not have to have the big voice module. Yeah, so it's like a little cartridge, and you plug it in, and then the game goes on top of it. I'll, I I'll send you a picture. Uh, okay. I haven't tried it before, and I tried to look it up for Caleb, who was asking me about it, and it doesn't look like it's available right now, but that was on eBay. I will look on uh, a website and see if I can find it, because that, okay. was, that was a cool way. So I bought that, so it was a voice, and then it was a multi-cart that went on top, and it was like one, you know, you, instead of that big unit. Yeah, I'll have to get something like that. Uh, Chris says, yes, the voice add-on for the Odyssey 2 used the same chip as the IntelliVoice. That's that's interesting. I didn't know that before today. That's cool. So, all right. So, guys, we are going to play a few games. Uh, we are going to start out with TJ's very first game uh, that he made, and that is Invasion of the Cloud People, right? Yep, and this is the keyboard one, and I haven't played this for quite a number of weeks and months, so... We'll just wing it and give one go at it and see how it goes. Okay, uh, now you need to help me out here. Uh, let me see yeah, here. so it's Q A O P. Q is up, A is down, O is left, nope. P is right. Not, not that part. I, I'm in the next storm. How do I back up? 
Okay. Not out, but back up in the browser. The, the two little dots that are up here. Use the arrow oh. key to go up to the dots and click on the one that's two dots. And then it takes you okay. back one level. Okay. It's been so long. And which one is it classic 128 or 48 for this one? Classic 48, uh, 48K. Okay. Cloud People version 1.1 directory. I, it's been a while since I have this one up. So let's see here. Let me <clears throat> let me make sure that I'm up and running. And, and you'll play the one that's dot SNA. So it should say something like cloud peop dot SNA. Cloud peop one dot SNA. That's the one. Yep. All right. Let me switch over. Check out this setup. Oh, where is Oh, there it is. So I've got your YouTube banner at the bottom. I think you've seen this before. Specky Computers on the left. I still have my uh, camera on the left side upper, and then I can have the game here. Yep. So I'm using the OBS virtual camera to put a little, hopefully it doesn't lock up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yeah. So you're going to play first? Oh, we can we can play same time, or we can play one at a time. How do you want to do it? Um. Uh... Yeah, I'll just say one at a time. They're quick games. We're going to each probably die pretty quick. So, not the you other one. Go for it first. Sure. Do it. All right. Uh, and you can talk, speak about the game as sure. we go. Yeah. So, in this first game, there's no shooting. It, it was all about collecting. So, oh, I'm acid, trying to rain. Raindrops that are red are acid. Blue ones are good. You can drink blue water. So, the whole goal is that you have to collect at least. In this game, 20 of the blue rain dots or raindrops in order to bring up a portal. You then touch that portal and the portal takes you to the next level. There's a total of only seven levels in this game or layers, cloud layers. And basically you're going to collect as many blue ones as you can uh, and touch the portal, go to the next place. If you do not, uh, or if the nasties, you'll see there's some moving tornadoes. And moving uh, lightning strikes, that's Chakra and Twistatron. If you uh, if those touch the portal before you do, game over. Even if you've got multiple lives left, if they touch the portal, you can't get to the next level without it. They stole it from you. So the whole thing is to collect at least 20 and then uh, bring up the portal. You'll see that appear and then touch the portal to go to the next level. Now, I mess around in uh, Next Storm. But I don't mess around in this one. When that thing opens up, I go to it. Yep. So this is my very first game that I ever created. Am I proud of it? Absolutely. Is it a very cheesy small game? Absolutely. <laughs> I've never See, admitted I'm a professional programmer. I do this out of fun. So I have a hard time with this one. Like I said, having the keys separated, I really have to sit here and think about what I'm doing because it's just not in my brain to use these keys. And that's why I haven't beat this game. I know I can beat it if I give it a good go with controls that I'm actually are in my head as, you know, muscle memory. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So as you can see, I oh! like the Game oh! over. It popped up right in front of them. And those that's whenever I cuss at TJ, I'll say, you bastard. So there's your one shot. So you got how many points? 40. <laughs> All right. I got to break so, that. So let's just I'm to tell people it. what happened. That is one of the fluke things. The game's totally random. That thing popped up right in the path. And if one of those, what was that? What's that guy called? The, uh, the, the tornadoes, Twistatron, and the lightning Twistatron. called Chakra. It was Twistatron. And right when it popped up, he came out on that road, touched it, game over. So yep. my game ended a little quick on that one. So let's see what TJ can do. Cool. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, you're, uh, you're, you're ready. You're on the, the bigger side of the monitor now. All right. Let me switch back over here. Playing at a little bit of an angle too. Mm. 
Michael Hayes says your own games are always something to be proud of. Definitely. I wish I was capable of such things. I just support people that make them. <laughs> oh, I don't like that spot. Oh, that's a oh, good one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the F-bomb, see? Yeah. So when TJ drops the F-bomb, I'll usually tag him and then put ha, ha, ha. <laughs> when they show up on the very top like that, that's when it's scary. So Kurt Bradshaw says, TJ, this looks very awesome. How can I get one? So the next, it's not easy to get one of those, but I believe you can still grab an end go, which is exactly the same thing. That's what I had for a long time first. Plays everything the same. Oh, shit. Ow. Oh, you got one. me by one. <laughs> <laughs> one point. Man, I had two last two lives. Look at it when you when they're over in here, it's good, but over here, uh, not so much. But uh, yeah, future levels. So basically, at the first, it's all about chakra and Twistatron running around. Level four introduces another character called Hail Bopper. There's white snowballs that explode on you, and uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't get very far on this one. Nope. So Michael Hayes time? said. I'm digging the Intellivision key click sound effect. That's what I told him, Michael. Uh, not this one, but the next storm. Wait till we get into that one. I told him that would make a really good Intellivision game. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Let me try one more time just to see if I can get to level four. All right, go ahead. And then if not, we'll try the next storm there. Let's see if I can do this. But I did win. So technically, uh, TJ won, Casey zero. <laughs> yeah, one point. One point. Oh, you bastard. Uh, if you don't like swearing, I, I do apologize in advance. And sometimes but, you edit it out. <laughs> yeah. But this one, there's no editing. Nope. Eric Lamb says, I have the NGO as well. Great machine. You can easily emulate the earlier Spectrum machines. The next is not so easy to emulate. But yeah, the NGO flawlessly will play anything you want to play. As far as the, uh, you know, the what the next can do. If anyone hasn't noticed TJ's name, it says TJ, the ultimate bastard. <laughs> yep. When he first popped in, I read that and I started laughing. So I, was gonna, I was just looking. I'm like, did you really get 41 again? Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's up to my portal before. So we're going to call that a, a day. So, yes, these <laughs> Specky games are really cruel. So we each got uh, past level one, and then two we got killed. And there's only seven. But it takes you a number of hours, days to get seven. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my game. And later on, there's... A little white snowballs that come and get flung at you and they kick your ass even more. Those are hard. Yeah. So, yeah. And I have this, I, I never mentioned before, but I do have an itch account. So if you go to itch uh, uh, account, SinclairSociety.itch.io, I have my games up there as well for you to grab. And it's donation stuff. So you grab it. This game will play on an older Specky. So if you get an older Specky, it can play on that one. All right, so now we're going to move on to your second game, and this is the one that you are creating the physical, but or, uh, are we supposed to say what comes with it? Um, you know, I can say most of it, yeah. So, uh, other no, no, than no, not one that. Last thing I haven't mentioned yet, but yeah. There's, I'm talking about the game. Oh, you mean what, what comes with in the game? No, what games come on there? Are, oh. are we allowed to say that? Yeah, just the, the, there's the two games, the game that we just yep. played and this game. And so the physical also, release, but it also comes with your first game on the card. Yep. The one yep. we just played. Yep. And then the PDF of the book that you showed a little earlier. I, I wasn't sure because I, I see things on regular video and I see things because I'm a member and sometimes I lose track of where did I watch that? Did he not say that on the on the regular <laughs> one or was it just for us? 
I decided to include that. I'm just putting everything in the world on that first SD card, four gigabyte in size. And hopefully folks enjoyed enough to where it was worth their while to buy it. Oh, it's great. It's an all-in-one package for your for Invasion of the Cloud people. All right, you go first on this one. All right. So the next storm has the same idea. Chakras in there, Twister Trons in there, Hail Bopper. Uh, but on this, there's not tons of blue raindrops or red raindrops to collect. There's only 10 that appear. You've got to collect seven. And when you collect seven, a portal comes up. You touch the portal. You go to the next level. There's a total of 10 levels. But in this game, I do introduce the actual cloud people if either one of us can get that far. Casey should because he's good. Uh, but I have cloud people that chase after you. And later on in the game, you can actually shoot them, but not off the get-go. you got to collect a gun to do it. Uh, and so it's got the same essence, collect, portal, go to the next level. But the same drawback is if the nasties touch your portal before you do, game over. Yeah, but you don't want them in, game, game over. And that yeah, gets frustrating. So what happened to me in the first one, it was close by. I had a little bit of time, but not much. Sometimes when you're playing this, it literally pops up on it. So, like, it's just instantly all of a sudden the game freezes and you're like, oh, oh TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric Blame says, Eric Lamb says, my money is on Casey on this one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm on the spot now. If I'm not on the spot, I play better. So, is everything <laughs> coming in the camera okay? Yep, I think so. All right, cool. All right. I've got it a little zoomed in, but when you play the game, I can see the whole screen. It shows it a little bigger. Okay, cool. Everything shows. All right, awesome. So as this you is see the game, everything guys. about this game, sound effects, graphics, it's a, it's a step up for me. This is the game, guys, that I told TJ a while ago would make a fun and television homebrew game. So on the left side, as your raindrop gauge, you have to get, is it seven? Yep. Seven yep. raindrops. They start out red, and each time you get one, uh, it fills that meter. On the right, you see the little uh, white circles. That's what level you're on. Oh, uh, this one's going to be a bitch. So if either one of those, and I forget the names, oh, if that shit. lightning bolt or the whirlwind touches one of the raindrops, they disappear. So you have to get them and prioritize before they touch them. So sometimes you're over here and you're like, oh no, those are the last two. If he touches one of those, I can't pass the level. So you got to zoom across there and hope you can get it in time. And as you move on, the levels, everything keeps getting faster and faster. But I, I really do love this game. Uh, my kids oh, play this so game as well. It. Oh, look at that. Oh. My raindrop landed right behind a red one, and I couldn't get it. So there he's lost one man. Oh, you, oh. I want to swear really bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a beeswax. <laughs> this game's screwing me over. Damn the programmer on this one. And it's dangerous oh, with... When you're down, when you're up at the top, uh, what, you know the lightning bolt comes once he hits the bottom. You know he's gonna pop up in the top, and it's random. And if you're up there, it could be right on you. Same thing on the left side, the uh, whirlwind. I forget the names of them right now. Uh, they pop up on the left. So if you're over on the left side grabbing some raindrops, and you better watch when that thing gets to the right side of the screen because you better get away. Oh boy. What do you got so there? I to the cloud triangle, 35 points only. You're going to kick my ass. You didn't even get 41. No. <laughs> Your turn. All right. For mine, I got to do it this way. Now, let me switch over here. Oh, look at this. It did it different. My, uh, oh, I'm locked up. Oh, ah, this no. is what happens. This is what happens when I use OBS like this. Give me one second here. Stop virtual camera. I can't go back and forth for whatever reason when I'm using that setup. I, you know, if I go play and then get out and go back to something else and then go back to it, it does weird stuff. 
So I'll try one time to see if it works because I hate not being on camera when I'm playing, but you're here, so it's not too bad. But I just like seeing all the extra stuff. Oh, good. It looks to be working. Let me start virtual camera, come back over. Oh, good. It's still just there, so I didn't even have to come back in. So next storm demo BAS. Let's see if I can beat 35. <clears throat> Can't remember some of the keys. The portal pass, that's what we need to get to. And the charged weapons, the battery, battery what's that Flux called? Battery. Fluxinator battery. Yep. All right. 35 points is the goal. <laughs> I think you're going to take this one. I don't want Eric Lamb to be a liar. But maybe I'll be lucky and you'll get screwed up right at the get-go. Oh, boy, it's actually close. They got some right away, so I need – thank God that thing wasn't in that one. Woo! So you never know where it's going to pop up. That thing could have popped up right by one of those guys, and my game's over. So until I get to 35 points, you never know what can happen. But I want to be able to – can you hear it? Barely, but it's because I'm using my phone. Guys in chat, let me know if you can hear that. I turned it way up now. Oh, boy. He's got that one. That's what I'm talking about, where you got to get it. Don't come up over here. Ooh. I'm really nervous because this game here, anything can happen. Whenever I pop up that portal, it can be right on the guy. Game over. Even though I can do well, I can't control where that thing <clears throat> opens up. All right, you guys can hear the game. I hear it okay. So you got to assess the situation really quickly at times. And you got to watch. Like, that's a good spot based on where things were. Because I know they're going to come from the top and the left. So I would have time to get over there. I enjoy Normally watching I other through. people play my game. <laughs> Normally They're I go rewarding. for all the points. I got to make sure I beat you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the cloud triangle now. You should. Oh. Uh-oh, I died. Oh, they're going to corner you. Oh! Yep, I already knew it. I can tell. Yeah, those are relentless little bastards. They're, the last levels, they get hard. Oh, they're already eating them. Oh. Oh, you... You can do it. You're going to do it. I'm not even messing around with those other two uh, raindrops. I'm getting out of dodge. <laughs> so now I have a portal pass. So once you get at least four raindrops, uh, I can push space bar and skip to the next level. I normally try to beat it without using that. But... This is a game that no matter how good you get, you do not always beat it. Nope. Random. The randomness, and this is where, you know, this stuff here, and this is nothing as well. I mean, this is not that hard compared to what's coming if I can get there. Oh, it had to go that way. Got it. Alto S. I definitely got you now. <laughs> yeah, you've already beat me for sure. One to one. Yeah. I just want to show off a few of the levels here. 
This one get this is gets hard too. I might already be dead. Oh. Oh. Oh, you can get it. Oh. oh. I couldn't wait or I would have been dead. <laughs> This isn't my best game, Eric. I've got some really high points on this, but it's been a long time since I've played it. And I'm playing with an 8-bit Doe Genesis wireless controller. Yeah, that's no what keyboard I use. crap. Oh, this is a little bastard of a level. Oh! Those are exploding hail boppers there. Snowballs being thrown at you. I do not wait on this one at all. They just randomly pop up, and if you go for points, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud triangle. Yeah, it's the best controller for this next, or the end go. Oh, boy. Now I have the refluxinator battery. Is that what it's called? Yep. Oh, that was a good spot. Doing good. So I still have that portal pass where if I get in trouble, I can get, still get through the level. I just got a free man. Now I'm back to three. And I've got the refluxinator battery, which after a certain level, is it here? I can shoot. Yep. This next one, you've got the battery, so... Oh, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna need the. Oh, you can still do it if they don't come down on you. Oh, oh they got it. So now, with that one coming down, I have to use the portal pass, or I have to. I guess I could die, huh? Yeah, if you wanted to save your ship, but I and wouldn't. Use, have. A lot of times, I don't. I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna beat it, but a lot of times you need that. To get to the last level. And I'm oh. dead. Is this the last Eric, level? This is the last level. Ugh. That thing just popped right up on me. But this is only a 10 level game. This... Oh, the <laughs> hailstorm. I got all those guys coming down, too. One more. You have to win it on uh, this one. It's it's hard to beat. It's so random on this. Oh, no, I'm dead. Oh. I couldn't move out of the way. Well, I got 73, and I got to the very last level. Nice. I beat it I probably tw over 20 times easily. Let me switch back over here. Very I good. Beat it a ton, but you do not beat this one every time. I'm telling you, it's not that easy. <laughs> that was good. You did a good run. Got to the final level. That level's hard. That yep. uh, hailstorm popping up, ran them all over. Those guys are fast. They're coming at you from all angles. And by the time you – like, I saw the guy – I can't move and get out of the way quick enough. Yeah. <laughs> My brain saw him, but the guy won't go quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll anchor with Intellivision. Uh, are you, or which one do, does it matter to you? Let's do Odyssey 2 because I have that one connected because I'm going to have to recable to do the Intellivision. So let me All turn right. my camera around and we'll put the uh, Odyssey 2 on here. I need one quick second for the Odyssey. I got to switch uh, my retro tink inputs and then i'm good to go on that one i've got them all hooked up just one little quick switch here and i'm good for odyssey never played odyssey streaming before switch it over i see one please work oh yeah i forgot i actually have to switch the mode as well I'm going to put my tripod up and see if video shows well enough. 
Let me see. So you're probably seeing all oh, around good. my dirty office right now. <laughs> the, where's exit OSD? All right, let me see if I can still use my virtual camera on this one. I think that comes in okay. Even though it says Specky, at least I'm still on camera like you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Now, now I have the urge to beat that game, so I'm not going to sit here, obviously, and do it on live, but TJ's going to get a picture very soon that I beat that damn game again. <laughs> <laughs> For as long as it's been since I played it, I have to take – ooh. I can't reach Thank mine, but my, I have the same one. I got to the last level. That's not easy in itself. So you, once you get yours, I'll just mimic whatever you're playing because there's different choices on this one, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll just play probably the number one. So select game number one? Uh, yeah. I'll let you go first. So I... <laughs> Oh, shit. So you push number one? Yes. Okay. Oh. So I'm, if, if you're not familiar with the Odyssey games, most all games have only one life. That's it. So when you die, you die. So we may be able to each play a, a few of them here. Like I keep dying right, right, right now because I'm yapping. So let me... Get going. Oh, you or, you already died? <laughs> yeah. See? Again. <laughs> so what one more time? <laughs> now this game, you know, obviously it's like a Pac-Man type game, but this game, sometimes you get down to that last pellet and they run from you. Which is fine, you eventually catch it, but you also have to dodge oh! uh, the bad guys while you're trying to get the pellet. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's a, not an easy game at all. Nope. These guys learn from the specky programmers. <laughs> I haven't even made one. Fuck it. You. Oh. <laughs> Why is that, Michael? Michael says, uh-oh, playing Casey Munchkin. This is a copyright strike waiting to happen. <laughs> it is? I've never heard of that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a... Uh... I'm trying to get the camera in. Monetize or anything anyway. Okay. I've played Casey Munchkin plenty of times. Never had any copy, copy strikes. Oh, come on, you bastards. No. This Kurt, this is Casey's Munchkin. Casey Munchkin. Casey Munchkin. Hey, I finally made it past one. Okay. Oh, Michael's joking. <laughs> you scared me there for a second, Michael. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's like Smurf on in television. I have that game, what? Michael. Okay, your turn now. So I got 39 points after quite a few tries. 39? Yeah. All right, let me let me switch on over to the other side here. And you did game one. Yep. Game one. Oh, crap, it's super loud. I can still go. What was my score? 20 something. It's on the left. 26. Oh, yeah. On the left. 
Now, you did it twice. Did I beat you on the first one? Yep. Your high score so far is 26. Uh oh. Now, yeah. So now you see how they're moving all over? Yeah, these dots move. They're not like Pac Man dots that stay stationary. You've already beat me. Come here. <laughs> Come here, you little bastards. I have no uh, no muscle memory for this game whatsoever. Oh, I thought I could get it. Ah. I can't even tell when I can eat them and when I can't. Uh-oh. Got it. Not many points, but I cleared it. Yeah. See, you're you're smart. You're waiting for that. Oh, well, oh. how did I don't know what happened there. Boy, I had it turned up for the specky. <laughs> And holy crap, was loud. That thing, it was, I mean, I don't know how loud it was for you guys, but that hurt my ears. <laughs> ah. So now we're on to Intellivis. So that was Odyssey 2 game. You you won on that one. So now we're going to play Space Invaders, the Intelligent Vision homebrew from Intellivision Revolution. And we are going to try it. This is the one that has more options. This is actually the one I was thinking of. Because this one has a lot of different choices for the grid, for everything. So now I've got to switch mine back here. Just give me one second. So for the Odyssey, I have AV mod and my Intellivision is RGB mod. I think I'm saying that right. So I just have to switch out the little part on my retro tank. Michael Hayes says, I believe Casey's crazy chase where you eat a centipede was in response to the lawsuit over the original game. Yep. All right. So now I need to switch the mode. <laughs> All right. So this is the one level of play. I say one, you know, we don't want to put it on hard, do we? No. <laughs> so I'll go, so I would say one and then beginner. But then speed of the invaders. What do you want to put for speed? <clears throat> uh, one through three. Two. Two? Oh no. That, how do you select you, uh after you uh, go beginner? What do you click on to select enter? Enter. Enter. Now two. put two. Two and then for me on again? this one, I want the big grid. Don't do the small grid because press enter. And now you can pick four to eight. Four is small. That's all that's gonna be on there if you put four. Push like so what do you want? Six? Try that. Push six and you can see it, I think. Okay. You can see that's as many that'll be on the screen at once. And then now you pick rows. How many rows? Five. So we did six and five? Yep. All right. So I can't see your face in this one, but I got it zoomed in so people can see the game. Okay. Let me see. It might be okay. big enough. Guys, is that big enough? I think it's big enough. We can see you all now. I didn't know you could do that, Michael.
Oh, they're getting lower. That looked like you got two in one shot there. Yeah, they're pretty good. Score 300 points. Got through level one. Also, guys, if anyone after all this has any more questions for TJ, throw them in the comments and make sure that I see them. And we'll get it after he plays this game. If there's any other questions you guys have thought of or things you want to ask him, go ahead and put them in the comments now. Looking good for this oh. level. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, that was close. Oh, you're getting... Got him. Oh, you got that. I'll have to admit, I didn't think you were going to make that one. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can shoot the bullets in that one. This one. You can shoot the enemy bullets? Uh, well, or maybe not. Maybe it just made a different explosion to my eyes. I'll ask him after he's done playing, Michael. It's a big orange thing that pops up. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're getting down there. Is that final? Did I, die? I think so. Final score, 2,100. Final score, 2,100. Beginner, medium, 6 by 5 layout. Last screen, 3. Okay, so let's see. Let me switch on over. Let me see if I can still do. Okay, I'm just going to use the same one because that will work. It's already set up. Hopefully it works right. Oh, good, it's working. Everything look good on there? All right, so Speed of the Invaders, we did two, right? Uh, yes. Two, and it was beginner, or was it medium? Medium. And we did six? By five. Five. Oh, I almost got it. <laughs> it's a really good Space Invaders game. I don't think I shot any of the spaceships up top ever in this ever. Round. Yeah, David well, kind of took uh, two games and just kind of took the best of both worlds. I'm sure I've shot the spaceships before, just not this. Because I, I, I played this game from one of my videos before. But this time I wasn't paying attention to it. Well, there's 300. I thought I was going to get it a couple times, and I didn't. Oh, come on. You passed this one also, right? Uh, yes. I made it through th to three. Oh, 
Uh oh. And I remember now you barely made it. On two, yeah. Uh oh. Oh, I got two for one. I got lucky. Now you had like twenty one hundred points. You must have got that red thing at the top. How did you do yeah, that? Yeah, I probably did. I just didn't remember. I'll have to watch the video later. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because now I'm like. That might be like, I might not be able to catch you because of that. <laughs> ah, come on. I'm messing up. Ah, I wanted to get it there. I couldn't. Twenty-two eighty. You you beat me. I was a wee bit nervous. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I don't even know how many points that's worth. The only game that I won is the first game, and I've won won it many a times in terms of all levels. And you have yet to win it, so at least I did something good today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you beat and me in all one game. Other game. One point. Hey. It's a it's point's a, win. a point. A yes, win's right. a win. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Woo! Are you playing this on the actual in television? Yeah, I'm on original console now. Cool. I have four uh, from Ivory Tower Collections. Jesse, he does great work. Uh, this is the one I mainly play on right now. It's an Intellivision 2. So I play on this one because I can use arcade sticks and different things as well. Oh. And I also what have adapters you? from 8-Bit Widgets. Caleb Gardner, the guy I was telling you about a while back. I can use uh, Intellivision Flashback and other controllers with my Intellivision too. Cool. Uh oh. No. Oh. <laughs> Seventy-eight hundred. Nicely done. Oh. <laughs> Let me get back over here. Well, that was fun. I don't even remember the last time. Let me catch up and chat here. I don't remember the last time I played three different consoles online in the same sitting. So we played the Specky Next, two games there. We played Casey Munchkin on the Odyssey 2. And then we played Space Invaders, homebrew for the Intellivision, all within a few minutes. Yeah, that's a many hours. Actually, it's, we started this at 5.30, so two hours. Yeah, we're an hour 53 in between the interview, the first part I did, and then the gameplay was – the gameplay was at least half of it. Yeah. So Kurt nice. Bradshaw is asking uh, – oh, I had a question up from uh, Michael Hayes. Oh, man. How do you like Kool-Aid Man? Have you played Kool-Aid Man on the Intellivision? No, but I you did give me that game, and I don't think yep, I've you have it. it. Yeah. He has not tried it yet, Michael. Uh, let me see if I miss anything else here. Michael says, I have an idea involving Kool-Aid. No Jonestown either uh, for a game. <laughs> Jet Screamer. He says, I have this game. It's really fun. Yeah, David Harley does great work. Uh, Kurt Bradshaw, can you still get it CIB? Not at the moment unless you happen to find it on eBay. But you can get the ROM for $5, like I said earlier, on Intellivision.us. This ROM for uh, Space Invaders and a lot of other homebrews in the hacks he has, they're only $5. So great deal if you like and you can use ROMs. Definitely go check them out. He has a lot of free ROMs also. Not all of them are even pay for ROMs. There's a lot of free ones you can get to put on your flash cart, whatever it is you use. They'll work on all of them when they're from him. Uh... Look at that sprite scaling, uh, Jet Screamer says. Rickster says the points on the red spaceship are random. Oh, they're random. So you never know what you're going to get when you hit it? 
Wow. Or is it I like how how quick you hit it after he comes out or something like that? I don't know. Huh. All right. Any final questions for TJ, guys? Throw it up right now uh, while we're closing out, and we'll ask them. But it was very fun to have you on. It was fun. feels like we were hanging out almost, you know. It's like uh, playing some games, got to ask you some questions. Yeah. I had a good time playing. I had a good time having a good reason to play my my next and my Odyssey 2, which I have not hooked up to this YouTube uh, setup I have. I played it. I tried out my modded console and a couple games when I first got it, and I haven't touched it since. It's been a while. Oop, I got one stuck on here. I don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, nothing else. Eric Lamb said, very fun. He's been it. So the earlier time, plus having you on, he stayed in the whole time this time. A lot of times, because sometimes my television ones, they'll go three hours. And a lot of people on the East Coast, they just can't stay up that late. I wouldn't either if it was that late for me. But I would catch it later. So, you know, now being an earlier time and on Monday, it's a little easier. Like right now, it's 7.30 my time. My kids aren't even going to be in bed by the time I get down, which is kind of cool. Well, anything else? Oh, there's one. Of the, which one's that? This is Blue. Blue? Blue. Hi, Blue. The camera, Blue. Blue. <laughs> he kind of looking around. I'll make sure uh, Robbie and Arlene, I'm going to skip to the part where you answer their questions and I'll show them. And then I'll show them at the end too. one of the cats. Cause I don't cool. know. I've seen, I think I've seen your cats, but I'm not sure if I've seen the other one. I'm sure I have. Yeah. But yeah, this was, well, I'm, I'm glad we were able to make uh a date to, to play some video games and in the near future, maybe the summertime or something, I'll travel down to the central Valley there and we'll get together and I'll see your man cave and we can kind of make a video together or something. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, yeah. For those of you that don't know, TJ and I aren't that far apart. A couple hours. Uh, he used to live fairly close to where I grew up and until he moved where he's at now, but it's still not that far away. So Maybe maybe this year too, uh, maybe it'll work out and I can go to one of those computer uh, shows like you guys are going to. I'd like to go to one if it worked out. I think yeah. last year, uh, I think I had a big race. And there's also a fun game expo in Sacramento and I think they do it yearly. Uh, I told you about that one last year. Then I ended up not being able to go. I, and I can't remember why. I want to say it was a big race or it was in December though. I can't remember. I Maybe a family event. Uh, I want to try to go to that one, too, because it'd be fun to go to another show that I'm sure no one else on YouTube's going to, at least that I know. I like to uh, check it out, maybe find some cool stuff to buy. It's only like an hour for me, so why not go if I can? Yeah, for Michael sure. Michael Hayes says, uh, a chocolate point Siamese. I had a couple chocolate points before. My current one is a blue point. Yeah. Wife likes cats. I'm actually kind of allergic to them. Just picking him up, my eyes were already itching. <laughs> oh, boy. How do you have cats in the house of with allergies? Woo! Yeah, 30-some-odd years of uh, married life with somebody that likes cats. It's just the way it goes. I kind of deal with it, I guess. Yeah, my sister's allergic. We have one cat, and she can't even come over. Like, if we hold the cat, and then two hours later, we drive to her house, and the kids hug her, she has like gets real bad allergies from that. So yep. it's like, yeah, she's she has a pretty bad. It's not but fun. yeah, maybe maybe sometime again though, whether it be weekend or weekday, whenever you've got some free time, we can just set up a not all the interview stuff, but we can just set up a games, whether it yeah. be Specky or Odyssey, and we can just play and hang out and chat. I think that'd be fun. Absolutely, and I think we need to get Eric to play live yeah. on TV, Invasion of the Cloud People, the Next Storm, to prove he can win the game. Let, let's let's just see how he plays. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that then. All right. Well, I thank you so much for making time out of your day to come on and tell people about your channel, what you're about, what you like to do, and you know, play some games with me. I had a good time. Uh, it, it felt like we were hanging out playing some games, so I really enjoyed it. And I look forward to having you on again in the future or later. You know, like whenever you come down, check out the man cave, and we'll make a video then as well but 
Uh, you know, I talk to you all the time, send you messages. I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Eric says, sign me up. Yeah. Jet <laughs> saying good night, everyone. We're 25 seconds from two hours. Wow. So I just got to get it in there. We'll do the little outro. But thank you so much, TJ. I really appreciate it. And you have a good night, sir. You as well. And thanks, everybody, for watching this long. Thanks for watching our little fun game night. Yep. And we will see you soon, I'm sure. All right. Good night. All right, guys. So thanks for watching uh, next Monday because we are permanently on Mondays. 530 Pacific time will be episode 14. This is going to be a cool episode for Intellivision people. We're going to be talking about Intellivoice usage and homebrew games. We're going to have a publisher. We're going to have a programmer. We're going to have a voice actor. And we're going to have a panel talking about the whole process. Each person has a unique perspective on what has to happen, get done, and their experiences. We're going to be taking live questions from chat, and they're going to be a lot of the team that work on the new Ghostbusters game, and that's going to be William Moeller as a publisher. That's going to be Carlos Madruga as a programmer, and Mike of Mike's Gaming Gala, who is a voice actor slash YouTuber, among other things. So that's going to be a pretty interesting show. I'm really looking forward to it. I really don't know much about that process. I'm finalizing the questions and I'm reaching out to a few people. So Michael Hayes, you would be a good one. Uh, send me some messages if you've got some good questions that I can populate and, and uh, add to what I've got uh, on what to ask. You know, we've got three people. We've got the publisher, the programmer, and the voice actor. So let's get some good questions. And, uh, you know, this should be a fun episode next week. So I will see you guys all next week, Monday, 530 for the IntelliVoice show. Thanks for watching this one. And until then, we'll see you later. Good night, everyone.